My dear friend Elizabeth is a very talented artist, a painter and a quilter, and while it seems like everything she puts her hand to is a thing of beauty. These are Elizabeth's words first from that she wrote about a painting class that she had just finished. One of my assignments was to try to paint an ugly painting. This exercise was to help us let go of the idea that every painting has to be precious or perfect, because just thinking that stops us from trying something new. I started off just mixing together everything left on my palette from the past few days to create the nastiest toilet water color I could imagine. The paint was dryish and chunky and didn't mix up well. Perfect. I applied the background with a silicone shaper, a tool I dislike very much. And as I came to the figure, I resisted continuing the vertical movement because it would have looked too correct. I added some phthalo blue to the remaining barf color to do the floor. The figure is painted pink, a color I use so seldom I didn't realize I never use it and only thought of it because another artist mentioned using pink, that they don't use pink. I tried to make the other colors as jarring as possible. The dog is painted from a gray made from black and white, the gray I hate the most. Poor little guy. I'm not even sure what he's doing in the picture, except that I thought maybe he wouldn't belong. It's strange to say, but I think I've painted a self-portrait. Although this wasn't my initial intent, I think it exposes how I feel about myself, someone trying to do something they're just not made for, but dressing, dressing up garishly, and owning it. A poser to be sure, but posing with decided confidence. That's the end of Elizabeth's part of the story. Haven't we all felt like a poser at some moment in our lives? Where we're doing something that we're just not sure about, but we're in there trying to do it anyway. I know I have. It all happens almost every time I try something new. Sure, there are some things I like to think I'm pretty good at, but there are also things I dream about, like writing books that are meaningful, that help people. And when I sit down at my computer, I have that moment when I wonder, is anybody going to want this book? I mean, there are a lot of lovely people in my life who will read it because they care about me, but will they want it? Will it actually offer what I hope it could bring to the world? But one of the secrets I'm writing from learning, learning from all, I'm sorry, let me try that again. But one of the secrets of writing that I'm learning from authors that went before me is that your first job is just to sit down and write a crappy first draft. That takes all the pressure out of the equation. Just like Elizabeth's painting, taking all those words that I've got lying around on my palette and mixing them together, creating images that even if they come together like the nastiest toilet water, will be a beginning. So I bought the painting and I framed it rather imperfectly. And it sits on my desk right behind the computer here where I see it every single time I sit down and it has a sticky note in the corner that says, your only job is just to write a crappy first draft. Because my job is not to be perfect. It's to do that crappy first draft. And I will be forever grateful to Elizabeth for capturing this feeling and telling this story, reminding me to, that I just need to put on my metaphorical tutu, thank that little gray pup for keeping me company, and dance, because you can't do anything if you don't just begin. Thank you.